Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on drill music and the streets. As the drill genre of rap grows in popularity, so do the questions about its close ties to gang activity and gun violence, especially with so many artists and their fans in their teens. When money and fame from the music are allegedly used to fuel gang wars, law enforcement is stepping in. Our Fox 5 camera was there as Michael Williams, better known as Chef G, the godfather of Brooklyn drill rap, came out of the 77th precinct on May 16th after being rearrested. He wore a prison uniform because he was already behind bars on a gun possession plea. Brooklyn DA Eric Gonzalez says he was one of 32 men and women charged in a 140-count murder conspiracy case that alleged Chef G and Sleepy Hollow used money from their music to fund gang shootings. The NYPD says it is not targeting drill rappers, but instead going after those responsible for gun violence. Well, everybody looks up to these guys, so, you know, it's, it's a shame that they're using this platform, you know, the music platform to actually, you know, uh, carry out, you know, a negative message. Uh, when I say negative message, you know, I'm not talking about the music, it's what they're actually doing. We had exclusive access inside the NYPD operation to apprehend the defendants who were already pre-indicted. They were alleged to have used more than 30 guns to threaten or eliminate rivals. Police say Chef G ruled the streets from behind bars via text message orders, offering cash bounties for shooting ops, the opposition. Criminal defense attorney Don Florio has successfully defended many hip-hop and drill rap artists. She says artists need to be more aware that what they say about their street activity in any form can be used against them. Well, of course you can rap about, you know, your environment, you can rap about, you know, whatever, but don't rap about things that you've actually done because that's how um, the government will come for you and it's like telling on yourself. The NYPD detectives from the Gun Violence Suppression Division told us Chef G and Sleepy Hollow allegedly used their immense popularity from their music to maintain tight control on the streets. American Music Group President Danny Sue Griffin represents a variety of artists, including incarcerated drill artist 90 Racks. Griffin says if they want to have a serious music career, they need to leave the streets behind. When these drill artists start getting a little popularity, they got to learn how to make a little, little better decision even though that decision might cost them. The most surprising thing is that it doesn't stop. They're still, they're not learning from the previous cases where people are getting locked up for these, the same things. It's just a cycle that's continuing. A successful drill artist can earn hundreds of thousands of dollars or even a million dollar record deal before they're old enough to legally drink. That's a dangerous situation if they don't have guidance from professional management, says Vidal Barkley of Capitol Records. These people are coming in, they got cousin or homeboy that come in to do management that never did anything before. Let's get into it now with our diverse panel. Joining me is Dawn Florio. She's on a break from her latest murder trial. She's a criminal defense and entertainment attorney. Dawn, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Lisa. We appreciate it. Also with us is Corey Pegues. He is a former uh, NYPD deputy inspector and author of the book, Once a Cop. Corey, thank you so much for being with us. Also with us is Vidal Barkley. He's a, a vice president of a and Capital Records. He's the owner of the Cultivated Agency and among his many artists that he works with okay. under various umbrellas are a lot of the young up and coming drill artists. Um, Vak, I wanna start with you on this because you've really been on the forefront of the movement to try and give these young men oftentimes from very tough circumstances a real yeah. opportunity at a authentic, you know, and profitable music career. How do you define drill music? I define drill music as, you know, artistic expression from the young kids of telling of what they see every single day matched with the, the vibes and the beats that came from Chicago and the UK and the reggae scene all fused together to make this incredible sound that these kids just was able to captivate and was able to be make it into something very, very, very lucrative for all of us. All right. Um, drill is like basically street. It's really just art imitating life, honestly. All right. Vok, what about the very name drill? Because a lot of people say that means shoot, that means kill, That's that it's street language, street slang for that. Um, Home Depot sells a lot of drills. So <laughs> it was just basically 
the, the name drill itself came from people drilling their names in the songs. So in Chicago, when King Louis, he was drilling against his ops. So instead of going and shoot at them, he was actually doing the music. So that's why it was called drill. Cause it was like a fake, it was like basically you killing somebody on the on song, basically. But then a lot of times too, uh, Don Florio, as as we've seen in some recent high profile cases, there's the music itself. The lyrics have been used according to what the police and the prosecutors say, as an actual almost like a diary of what actually happened between alleged gang members, between the ops on the streets. Where do you see drill music? Because you represent a lot of these artists. So police and prosecutors use the, their own music to really incriminate them. So basically the lyrics are on trial and the police have long seen that black music as synonymous with violence. Now they're really targeting the drill artists. They monitor their music and use their ly ly lyrics as evidence to really link the person to crimes. So a lot of times will just count on themselves and that's an admission. So you have to be very careful about what you, you know, rap about. These drill rappers are pretty much making it very um easy for police officers to solve crimes. No, look, what they have to know uh, in the NYPD, the biggest police department in the country, they got an entire unit. They have the a t entire unit, a social media unit. And all they do, they have detectives sitting there all day and they just follow on the social media they're listening to the lyrics and they all it, it's it's just connecting the dots. No longer do we have to do what we used to call gumshoe police work where detectives got to really go out there, interview people, try to find leads. They're putting it all in the music. They're smoking on this one, smoking and chewing on that one. And all it is is connecting the dots. And then you add informants because it's informants. We got a whole bunch of informants in the drill uh, genre. So it's pretty easy for them to solve these crimes. I, and it, it, I have to put the disclaimer that I love the drill music. My son is 15. That's what he listens to. It's not about the music. Uh, the music, like Box said, the music is explosive. It's the lyrics. I just wish that they wouldn't tell everything that they're doing because it's making it very simple for the police. And, and, and a lot of these cases and these huge indictments uh, and, and pre-indicted arrests. Um, we're joined right now by Danny Sue Griffin, he is the president of AMG Music. He represents many drill artists and throughout his long career in the music industry has represented uh, multi-platinum artists as well. Um, Danny, in terms of the circumstances, most of the drill artists seem to come from some of the toughest neighborhoods that we have here in New York and New Jersey. Tell us about what they have to deal with on the streets. Yes, it's just like, how y'all doing? So I can how you doing? All right. It's just really like a product of their environment. You know what I mean? They they actually rhyming and talking about a lot of stuff that they saw or what they lived through. You know what I mean? And some of them, some of them, they actually lived through it all. They just seen it because it's right on the uh, front step, right on their front porch. You know, so they just it's like hip hop started back in the day from from where we came from, from what we what we was doing. This was the type of music. This is just another genre right now. That's uh that's getting a lot of notoriety. Unfortunately, a lot of the notoriety is coming from a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, yeah, a lot of the negativity and stuff. So be it. Don't go away. We're just getting started. Danny, what what about that? Because you you represent an artist now, Ninety Racks, who's who's uh doing doing time. We we see in the the federal holding portion of Essex County Jail. He's in there. Casanova's in there. Uh, K Flock is 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 in there as well. How do you I call them. I call. I, I call all that like a quality of life. A quality of life crime. It's like they growing up in these neighborhoods, and the cops are targeted, targeting these neighborhoods. And in these neighborhoods, they don't have backyards. Most of them, they have front yards. And the only place that a uh, individual can go to is on his front porch, or his front steps, or right down the sidewalk. You know. So a lot of this stuff is like if you targeted any group more than likely you're going to get some type of guns out of them. You know what I mean? Like, and it don't have to be a drill group or drill artist. You go anywhere in America and you target any group, you want to get what you're, what you're looking for more, more than likely. So the way that I think that we should scale back is handle it a little different, you know, talk to these drill artists, give them a, give them a chance to really, really make it, give them a chance to really understand what's going on rather than just, 
bomb rushing them every chance you get. Every corner you turn, there's hip hop police, there's gang unit, there's this and that that's going on. Nobody's really trying to bridge the gap on talking to these guys and showing them a better direction. Because a lot of times these guys, a friend, a friend, they friend people that in their neighborhood, that's in their neighborhood that you, okay, they friend might be very gangster or very drill orientated, you know what I mean? But that don't necessarily that they are. These kids got to start hiring these parents, got to start getting in tune and hiring people who know how to move these kids around in the music business where they can be safe and secure. Because these people are coming in, they got cousin or homeboy that come in to do management that never did anything before. And it goes kids, back to the labels, though. That goes back to the labels. It's like when the NBA had a problem. If they want an artist, if I want to sign an artist, whoever the artist put in front of me, that's who I want to do business with. Nothing I can do. The lawyer nah, the because, because like me, you got to look at it. When they come to me, I, I want to see who your team is. I want to yeah. talk to your team. I want to see who rep who, who representing you also. And if, and if the right person not representing you before I'm you come back to me, you won't have to shut that down. Son, but in, in terms of the tar in terms of the targeting of them, is a lot of it because as their music career starts to advance, they're not able to really put the streets behind them and all those negative influences. Drill music does not kill people. People kill people. And the problem is we have all these young people that um, because of violence, it's escalating, you know, by it's exponentially. So what we have is we only hear about the famous people, the drill rappers that are that are in the media that are getting arrested, that have problems. But the whole problem is systemic. These young people um, that come from um, black and brown families that come from um, poor environments, the violence is just out of control. So like the big drill artists, the five years and, you know, the, the big, huge drill artists, why aren't they like really getting this relationship with the NYPD? Like we, you gotta, like they we do. can't do a one-off. You know what I'm saying, Pop? We can't do like a one-off for the cameras. We take pictures and say, yo, we was in one oh, police plot. It's, 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 it's kind of hard to do. Oh, you, know what, you know why? They, they don't want to walk and then, then, No, you did it. No, they don't want to be going into having a, a, you know, a, 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 a Instagram live no, 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 or Snap no, live going into police headquarters looking like they're talking with the police. Hold on one second. I'm not saying do it on camera all the time. What I'm saying, Danny, on the, on the backside, yeah, like monthly, weekly, quarterly meetings like to like talk about this because Danny made a great point that like these kids can't leave their neighborhoods and they gotta they gotta show love to I mean I live in a suburb and I got swimming pool too high and cars my son is this and all this drill he ain't never been he ain't never been nowhere in New York City in the, in the, in the heart this case this murder conspiracy case that was brought against a uh, chef G and several dozen other uh, co-defendants in this the, are prosecutors throwing the book at these cases, or what's your take on that? So my take is that the, the government has been watching these artists when they start to pop, okay? So they scroll their social media, any gang signs, any bandanas that signify gang associations, their associations with who they hang out with, It's they're all subject to if one person that's associated with with this crew or a gang and it could be very loose it doesn't have to be an official gang what they what the government does they they just take people that hang out together or on a particular block now Corey, let me let me bring bring you into this for chef g he was basically the godfather of a bunch of gangs in brooklyn and he was so powerful even though he was allegedly crip affiliated that a blood set wanted to join with him because he had so much sway over the streets what do you think about that? No, well, yeah, listen, Rock, no, I was in the 6th, 7th. We got the most violent gangs in the city, you know, GS9, the 40s, 50s, the 90s. I was in charge of all of that. So I already know what it is. And these kids, like Rock said, like, they're not knowledgeable of what's going on. They're pretty much just having fun. This is just their lifestyle because that's what they live in every single day. That's what they do. You say the, the, like, the lifestyle is to just dri drive around, open up the sunroof, and this was one of the actual videos from the from the, the Chef G at Sleepy Hollow case is just start shooting out and shooting at their ops through the sunroof on the street. 
going down the street. Believe it or not, shot at Believe it, but but no, oh no, believe it or not, he knows that that happened to them. So you don't know what happened to them and what it's going to be to be the way they are. Right, right, Lisa. Believe it or not, this stuff happens more often than not, and it has nothing to do with drill. And I'm talking about in the violent areas, you know, the East New York, the Brownsville, up there, Parkchester, you know, East Flat. But this stuff is happening. It don't make the news. Now, because the drill, you add in the drill, the mayor's talking about drill. Yo, this is the big thing with the drill. But if the cops had a tail on you from whenever it was, they got a tail on you and they can't connect the dots. And then mm-hmm. you do one thing, like Box said, you do one thing, now boom, now they bring you in. But another thing, I just can't stress to Danny and Bach, and they already know that. It's a lot of informants in the drill game uh-huh. that's giving up a lot of that information. Okay, so... Well, and- we're going to get into the, the informants. I just want to bring Danny in on this, and then uh, we have to take a short break. Danny, in, in terms in terms of the the um, in in terms of what they face, the conditions, their reality. I was I was shocked, even though I'm out on the streets all the time and in a lot of different situations. It's just when we were at Bradley Court projects in Bradley Court houses in Newark, talking with Bag BCP, and uh, that the the development, the housing development where 90 Racks is from. The number of young men that were there, uh, Bag, who's now who's now locked down, his his brother was killed a year before while he was a teenager. The brother was a teen. The other friend that was right there had been shot seventeen times, hadn't even reached his eighteenth birthday. There's just, but this was all uh, very normalized. This was not anything. I found it shocking because I'm like, this is like a four block or five block war zone. What is, what effect does that have on their how they have to live their day to day. Is it really that bad for them on a daily basis? Yes, it's really that bad for them on a daily basis because, you know, these guys got to live their life right where they live at. These guys is not coming from other neighborhoods and then staying in front of the project. Most of the time, the project is the project people. You understand? And, and we all know how far that go back, you know, why they built projects. So now you have the results of why are you stacking people on top of people and next to people and under people? These are the these are the results of making decisions way back then against the minority. Bach, you've tried to mentor and you continue to 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 mentor a lot of the up and coming artists and the the drill artists that you work with um, in your in, with through Cultivated and your your label, but. How do you? It seems you know when when we hear everything that that you all are saying, it sounds like you're coming from the streets where you basically had to survive whatever gang activity was there, not getting shot, not getting not catching a serious case, and then once you do get a hit song or you really start your career really starts to bubble, then now you have to watch out for people who are trying to take away your chain or try and take away to, you know whatever you have that mm-hmm. that they want. How do you? It, it sounds pretty. Sounds pretty grim. How do you help them navigate that? I mean, me personally, with my artists, whenever we move outside, we got security. I make sure I have all that hired. Hired now, like like uh, like he was saying, he was saying how uh, people should have connection with the police. Hip hop police, they ran down on me and Webster Hall the other day. Gave me his number. Now I gotta, I make he makes sure, like yo, listen, I see your artist on the fly. I want to make sure that you. So now I have to inform him about everything that we have going on beforehand just to have them there on deck. And then my guy over at the at the mayor's office, at the community affairs office, at the mayor's office, I make sure I can connect with them every time I have an event to make sure that I have everything set up so we have everything protected so we don't lose any permits and things like that. And as far as the snitching go, if you don't do any crime, you ain't going to have anybody telling on you. Just don't do it. That's it. Just don't do the crime. Do it. You better position I'm scared. Don't do it, don't do it but Lisa. Yeah. So Lisa, with the with the snitching, people gotta understand. Like, I mean, you know, I was a cop for a few decades. Like, the feds play football. They don't play baseball. One to three. Right. When they sit you, when they sit you in that office and they telling you, you looking at seven hundred months. They can't even count that. They're like, what are you talking about? That's two years. No, seven hundred months. It's like, yo, I said, nah, I ain't do that. I got something. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So this is what these drill rappers, and not just drill rappers, all these gangsters, everybody. No, like the feds play 
football. It ain't one and three. It's like two and five. It's serious. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Drill Music and the Streets. You can share it and watch it again on our Fox 5 and Y YouTube page. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's 